Hello and welcome. My name is Paweł Pivosz and you are listening to Last Week in IT, the weekly podcast. Together with my fantastic co-hosts, Jakub Siwiecki and Jan Mazurek, we'll give you our perspectives on recent news, events, announcements and many more. And we do it in our own style. Join us and enjoy the show. Hello everyone, this is another episode of our podcast. And folks, today I want to ask you for something. Because I was listening to a very interesting podcast called Last Week in IT. Did you hear about this? Never. I, don't, I thought so. Um, so I was listening to them and they mentioned what are the skills which are important today in IT, right? They had very interesting ideas behind that. But I missed one, especially from the second episode, about 15 skills for business analysts. I thought that it is quite important to be creative in IT world. But they didn't mention this. How do you think? And do you think is it possible, Pavel, to be creative? Hmm. I need to you, think about it. Yeah. <laughs> As a DevOps, can you like? Is it is it possible? Well, uh, to being fully serious right now, um, I think that it's possible to be DevOps or let's say DevOps engineer. I hate this. If you are not creative in this area, you can do kind of engineering work, right? You can recreate pipelines. You can create some scripts. You can create some stuff based on documentation, based on the every material you have. But if you want to really, and I know that it sounds like bold statement, but if you want to live in DevOps manner, right? If you want to act as DevOps coach, DevOps lead, DevOps leader, maybe more than lead, you need to be creative because uh, there are aspects behind DevOps practice, DevOps way of uh, driving organization where this creativity is must have. But you have created your own CICD framework, right? Yeah. So that's kind of also like a creative process. I like to think so, yes. (laughs) And by, by what was it triggered? Well, by a couple of things, really. Sometimes it's it's very simple. There, you need one simple trigger to, to start acting on something. In case of this framework, there was a couple of triggers. There was a business need to discuss properly the approach to the way how we will develop and how we will deliver the solutions to the target environments. And also to create this let's say, flow of discussion with all stakeholders, especially with those ones which are not necessarily strictly technical, right? And not necessarily in this special part of technical area, right? Like cloud, like delivery pipelines, etc., etc. to be able to talk with them, right? So the main trigger, if you ask me about the main trigger, one trigger here is to create, let's say, the translation point for everyone. To so understand CICD. So, so, so it's so it's a creative process, right? So it's not recreating, but it's again about again creativity, right? And yeah. I think in general, I completely agree that that skill on that list that we discussed in the last episode is something that was overlooked. And I think in general, working in the IT world is not like working in the in the factory by the assembly line, pressing the same button over and over again, because we really try to always find a solution for complex tasks, complex activities. And you know, whether you are a business analyst trying to come up with a solution for a business requirement, whether you're a developer trying to combine elements and integrate and writing the code in the most efficient way, or whether you are a tester trying to outsmart a developer coming up with the use case that the developer didn't come up with, definitely there is a plenty of room in uh, in the IT world for creativity. And I don't believe that working in IT, we should be working only from nine to five because you never know when that creative flow will come and affect your efficiency at work. 
But you know what? Is this process of pushing the button not creative? You can make this creative. You can, yeah, I don't know, try to find a way pushing it with your fingers, nose, bum. There was this funny. Like. There was this funny example of there was a company making toothpaste, and every now and then there was an empty uh, toothpaste uh, pack. That was, you know, reached the customer and the customer was very unhappy and the reputation of the company decreased. So they've called a project manager. The project manager and the project team decided to come up with a solution that every now and then when there is an empty toothpaste pack that goes on the scale in the assembly line, there is an alert if this is identified and this, the whole assembly line stops. Someone needs to come, remove uh, that empty pack, send it once again to be refilled, and everyone was happy. Congratulations! Lots of money spent for the project. Project was successful, right? And over the course of months, the amount of empty toothpaste uh, packs was decreased. Uh, and in the end, after a couple of months, there was completely no result, uh, and there was no empty toothpaste packs. And then, and there was like very much surprised the management. So the management came and see what was happening, and turns out that. When there was an empty toothpaste pack, there was this big bell notification and everything. The whole assembly line stopped and one guy had to go remove that toothpaste pack and was just so annoyed with it that they just placed an electric fan because empty toothpaste pack weighed almost nothing and the electric (laughs) fan could blow off that from the the assembly line to to the basket, right? And just, you know the assembly line could continue without interference, right? So there is, in every work, in every aspect, I think uh, there is an area for for creativity. Yeah, that's definitely creative medicine for stupid approach. And uh, referring to toothpaste, um, if you think about it um, and you check how it looked and how it was designed in the past and how it evolved to current um, that you can just put on, uh, on shelf and it stands, because in the past it was just laying down and it was like you know like quite long one and you just like when there was like end you just like rolling it and taking out and it was just laying down and they started changing it and uh, even they started changing the part that you open the the toothpaste cork cork so like now you can just open that uh, using it right because there is this like the star, star, star shaped uh, hole in the exactly yeah, that, yeah, yeah that's in the true. past it was not possible uh, this is something that we like completely used to this like it's 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 normal for us and we as users we even we, like we don't notice this like oh it's nice oh nice but this is an example of creative process innovation even this is an innovation uh, step by step. So uh, very often we don't see uh, things that are creative, and uh, and this is very important to to use our current work to become creative, and not to think that we need to just let me finish mm-hmm. sure. to get some uh, certificate or some some you know, some prize that oh you invented this and you become Elon Musk, ta da Star Wars. No, it's rather about. It's another aspect of it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, there is. But like step by step, if you find some tiny f- way to de- develop better something that you're doing, this is the creativity, nothing else. Yeah, that's true. But I think this also comes kind of like aligned with improving your own life, right? That if you are tired of doing the same mundane work day by day, you know, it's just why test automation has been introduced, right? Just because it makes no sense to test manually the same button over and over again if you can automate the process. And this is a creativity as well. Yeah, exactly, exactly, right? So so it is, it is aligned with enhancing our life and making our life easier, better. I don't want to use the word laziness, that is a trigger for our creativity, mm-hmm. but there is some correlation uh, with that. Or, or I would say maybe instead of laziness, how to use the word increasing efficiency. Indeed. Like even cloud. Well, this is an innovation, right? It changed the world. Uh, but this came from uh, developers and from business. And uh, those people, probably they, they were discussing about some issues, some problems, and uh, brainstorming, um, using or maybe not using some technique, special technique, because in order to increase the creativity, 
um, in your team, your individual, you can use some techniques. There are a bunch of techniques. Uh, but um, they moved from point A to point B. They changed uh, not only their reality, but as well, well, IT, uh, not only but IT. And I think in general, uh, when it comes to this this approach of practicing the creativity, James Artusher wrote a book, uh, Become an Idea Machine, in which he writes that it's like an idea muscle, that if you will practice it, and you can practice it with anything that you want, you know, come up with 10 ideas every single day for what you will eat for lunch or how you want to plan your activities for the weekend, but also what might be the next big thing as a uh, uh, business opportunity, right? Because in general, those next big things, they're not necessarily a, a brand new startup with a brilliant idea. They're sometimes taking what already exists and enhancing only one part of it and making it slightly better. Like if you will look at Facebook and you will think that there was blogs in the past, there was uh, forums in the past, there was already stuff like uh, MySpace for storing uh, the files, pictures, music, whatever, right? Elon Musk, not Elon Musk, uh, Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> didn't... Uh, you know something that we, we are not aware of. Potentially, but <laughs> yeah. they didn't come up with those uh, ideas, they just combined, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg combined those existing things into one digitized platform, right? So that was the, the success of it. Or at least from my perspective, right? Well, there yeah. is exactly one technique, creative technique, uh, used in creative process, morphological analysis. And this is exactly, well, I cannot say that they use this, but exactly it explains the process that you, you mentioned. So you just grab uh, some uh, characteristics of some, uh, some product or some solution, uh, whatever, and uh, and then you you mix it you combine it and you trying to create something new based on some other uh, stuff that you uh, you want to mix and create yeah but coming back to the to the aspect of what i've mentioned that working in the it world is not working you know 9 to 5 we cannot predict we cannot plan the uh, efficiency and we cannot plan when we will be most creative because some days are good some days are bad you don't have every single day. You cannot force yourself every single day to be efficient. And actually, in the book, The War of Art, there is an author, uh, William Fockel, who actually mentioned in that book, and there's a quote, that he writes his books only when he is inspired. And I see uh, to it that I am inspired at 9 o'clock every morning. So it means that, you know, that sometimes... You know, some people try to force it and try to be creative. Like Stephen King tries to write one and a half thousand words every single day that he potentially might use in his next book or a book after that or the book that he is currently writing. But, you know, the idea is to practice, practice, practice and make sure that next time you will try to be creative, it will be easier for you. I think either it was uh, Nick Cave or, uh, or David Boy, one of them, explaining um, some some context of uh, inspiration because someone asked them about how you get the inspiration and uh, you, you know, become so creative and they said that very often uh, one of those uh, the guys uh, said that very often they uh, become very creative when they're driving a highway and they they don't have any possibility to stop or to write this great song that they hear uh, from the inner voice, and and they just so we lost so many probably, things. Probably, <laughs> probably, and 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 I think it was Nick Cave, uh, but I, I don't remember. But uh, let's say that it was Nick Cave, and uh, he said that he just telling to this voice because this is the voice, so some inspiration. Leave me alone, man. <laughs> just leave me alone. <laughs> I cannot do anything with this. Come like in one hour, then I will be. Uh, come back in one hour. So um, I think like everyone can get some creative uh, process, uh, become creative in not planned time, probably. So it, it can happen. So it's it's a normal thing. Uh, but probably, as you mentioned, like working with this muscle can increase the chances that you will get many more those windows of opportunities to, to, to be creative and just like uh, jump in and and just like um, uh, jump on this train and, and just uh, move forward with creativity. That's true, and I think uh, I read some time ago there was like a, a funny quote that 
the best ideas usually come to your head when you're sitting on the toilet. Just because when you are sitting in the stall, it's like a small space. So the electrons bouncing you know, around have a few, uh, smaller space and the probability that they will hit your head is higher. So it's a good place to actually come for thinking. So you should have a very small room with the toilet then. You know, I have a question to you because uh, I found another quote and this quote is from Pablo Picasso. It's, it was about the art, but I think we can convert this creatively to creativity. And he said something like that. And this will be like Pablo Pivosh quote. Creativity is the elimination of the unnecessary. I'm not sure if I agree with that, honestly speaking. What is your opinion? Uh, unnecessary or necessary? Yeah. Unnecessary. unnecessary. Hmm. Uh, sometimes uh, when I conduct a training about uh, creativity, I ask people to, to do something uh, which is not natural for them, um, but we do it in, uh, in some game. And this game has some rules. And they just need to follow those rules. And they need to improvise some public speaking, but following one of the rules from this game. And it's extremely interesting um, seeing people who completely like were saying, no, this is like a bad idea. I, I cannot improvise. I cannot do this. I cannot do that. After implementing some rule, so I would say rule which limits you somehow, uh, they become creative because they create something completely new following the rule. So um, I think limitation, limitation maybe it's not necessary, uh, but limitation can bring creativity. So I'm not sure would I agree with, with him or with Pablo Pivos. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I'm not sure who's the, the real owner of this quote. Um, but uh, I would say that uh, creativity can, uh, it's not a, a blank paper. Probably it's much uh, difficult and um, it's not so easy to become creative if you don't have some limitation, uh, some challenge. Uh, so if you have your own experience, you have some limitations, then you can uh, figure out and solve the issue that's around you, find a way how to, uh, to cross the, uh, the line that limits you. And what you said, Kuba, it triggered my mind to think that creativity rise when you need to come back to your comfort zone. But talking, talking about the creativity, there is a funny example. On one of the trainings, there was a, a trainer that gave a puzzles to, to the group and told them that they need to build an aquarium. And when the people received this uh, puzzle, they realized that there is no, the picture does not represent the aquarium. So the only way, ac according to the script, was to actually try to build physically aquarium from the puzzles that they have received. And that was the only way how the script suggested that there is a possibility. And the, the idea was that whoever comes with this idea can become uh, a leader of the group. Uh, however, when they did that on one of the groups uh, in Poland, then actually there was kind of surprising result because uh, one of the groups created the word aquarium from the puzzles. The other one took just a you know plastic bag and put uh, water inside and put a couple of puzzles in it saying that this is the aquarium and those puzzles are fish uh, inside. The other uh, group created just the frame of the, of the picture and put a couple of puzzles in the shape of, of the fishes and said that this is the aquarium. Right? So we can be very creative if needed. So in other words, don't play with Polish creativity, right? Right. And, and you know, to finalize this, this episode, I have a idea in mind. This, this, uh, this is some kind of takeaway for me. Uh, connecting this episode with one of the, our lasts about the skills we need to, or the skills which are the most important in IT. So what I heard from you is that there are creative ways to learn creativity. Completely agree. So with this bombshell, I think it's time to say Bye -bye. goodbye and see you next time. Have a wonderful time, guys. See you next time. Bye. 
See you. Bye bye. And that's it for today. This was last week in IT. Thank you for listening and please join us for the next episode. Follow us on social media, subscribe and comment. If you agree, disagree, or just want to say hello, we are waiting for you. Stay tuned, stay IT.